Go. Today is the disappearance day of Shiva Jiva Goswami. Shiva Jiva Goswami is uh, is the son of Anupam, who is the brother of Shiva Rupa Goswami and Shiva Sanatan Goswami. So Shiva Jiva Goswami was bestowed so much mercy by his two elder uncles. He was the nephew of the younger nephew of Rupa Goswami and Shiva Sanatan Goswami. So they were only one uncle or anything else? Two uncles. And they were also something else. They, they were, never taught that knowledge in relation to their uncle uncle. No. They were their guru. Guru. Oh, so you should tell their guru. So Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami were the gurus of Srila Jiva Goswami. Srila Jiva Goswami uh, studied in Banaris, Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he came to Vrindavan, where he took shelter of Srila Rupa Goswami. And for many years he was assisting Srila Rupa Goswami in producing the literatures that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had instructed him to write. There's um, a story that one time when Srila Rupa Goswami was working on Srila ba uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and one very senior Vaishnava, Sri Balabharacharya, he came there and Sri Rupa Goswami uh, offered him to look at what he was writing. And Balabharacharya, he, he saw the um, script that Sri Rupa was working on. And he found some uh, problems. A small, he considered it not a mistake, but a, a defect in the writing. And he discussed with Rupa Goswami about this. And Rupa Goswami very humbly uh, agreed to alter the text. And then Sri Bhattacharya, he went to take his bath nearby in Jamuna. And at that time, Jiva Goswami, he also went there. And he questioned Balava Bhattacharya on why, how, how he could find some discrepancy in Sri Rupa Goswami's writings. And they had a very wonderful debate about the points that Sri Balava Bhattacharya was uh, noticing or was thinking that was defective. And Sri Jiva Goswami very uh, shastrically defeated Sri Balava Bhattacharya. And Balava Bhattacharya went back to Sri Rupa Goswami and humbly begged his pardon and said that he had such an elevated disciple in uh, Jiva Goswami. And that the defect that he pointed out was actually not a defect at all. And then when Jiva Goswami returned to Sri Rupa Goswami's Kutia, Rupa Goswami was extremely angry that he should have questioned such an elevated Vaishnava. And he was so angry, in fact, with his young nephew, with his young disciple, that he told him to go from that place. He told him he was not qualified to stay with him, that he should leave. So Jiva Goswami, of course, was deeply smitten by this. So he left and he went to live in a crocodile hole near Nandagra. And he was crying very much. And uh, after some period of time, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami's uh, associate, was passing by there and the local people 
told him about this young sadhu who was weeping so much in this cave. And Sanatana Goswami immediately went there and found Jiva Goswami and he brought him back to Sri Rupa Goswami. But there are many lessons in this pastime that took place that we should not question what the Guru is saying. Simultaneously, we should always defend what the Guru is also saying. So in actual fact, both Jiva Goswami, he did the right thing that he was supposed to do in defending his Guru, and Sri Rupa Goswami also correctly corrected him. So in both instances, both was um, the correct thing to do. So Sri Jiva Goswami, he uh, being so much younger than Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami, he took all the grantas, the, the, the <coughs> scriptures that Sanatana Goswami, <coughs> Hari Bhakti Vilas and uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, Vidakta Madhava, Lalita Madhava, so many books that Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami had compiled and he very carefully edited them. He uh, published these books very nicely for Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. So he was spending so much of his time when Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami had departed from this world, then he was the Mahant. He was carrying on the line of the Goswamis. He was carrying on the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became the Acharya when uh, his gurus left the planet. And he compiled all the literatures that were left. And he did so much literary work himself. He compiled these Sandarvas. There are six Sandarvas, a total commentary in incredible depth on Srimad Bhagavatam. There's Tapu Sandarva, Priti Sandarva, Krishna Sandarva, all these different uh, 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 delineations on Srimad Bhagavatam. So this was his most voluminous work. Plus he wrote extensively on so many topics concerned with Rasa Tattva and Gyan Tattva. And at that time, uh, <coughs> being uh, the Mahant of Vrindavan, when Srila Naratam Das Tako came as a young boy to Vrindavan, he had run away from home, Srila Naratam Das Tako, and Srila Jiva Goswami, he gave him shelter at that time, and he introduced him to his guru, Sri Lokanath Goswami. So, we see Jiva Goswami was so important in compiling and uh, <coughs> collecting all these scriptures of Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami. And also he was assisted by Gopal Bhatta Goswami at that time. And... Uh, 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 okay. Radhamohan Prabhu, come on. Yes, so they speak on Yibhushan. What he has said, you 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 said, बहुत <laughs> 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 <
Where is Prabhu? Banwarilal Prabhu. Huh? He is managing. Oh, you are managing? Yes, one. Can you come? Try and sit down. Banwarilal Prabhu. Come on. Can you speak on Jeeva Goswami? Huh? Nothing? <laughs> then who will? Can you speak? तुमको पीट देंगे अभी कान काट देंगे सबके सामने सचमुच में तुम उठ करके बाप जो कुछ इतना हम तो पचास बार अभी तक बोले हैं डूब मरो तुम डूब मारेंगे अच्छी तरह से सबके सामने गोर गोविंद जैसा लठिया देख You can तुम्हारे तैयार होते हैं तुम्हारे हरी कथा तो रुचि नहीं हरी कथा में जो रुचि नहीं आता तुम्हारे कोई जगम कर बांग्ला में बोलो सीनियर होने से वो कहता है आज तक सुन भी सब कौन आई नॉट क्वालिफाइड टू स्पीक ऑडिट मी सो वट आर लिथ आई रिमेम्बर अबाउट श्री रजीव गो स्वामी आई वॉज ट्राई टू शेयर विद यू और अभी नॉन को पॉप प्रभु नॉन किशोर प्रभु है सॉफ्ट एक्सपेंसिव व्यू about him what i remember uh, shri gurudev often has delivered how the philosophy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu <coughs> has been uh so much expertly handed down by the goswami the six goswamis especially shri rupa goswami Shri Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, they es- established what is Raghunath Bhakti. Many of us have heard what is Raghunath Bhakti, the name, but what is it exactly? This has been clearly defined by Shri Rupa Goswami, and it has been more expertly presented by Shri Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Bhakti. is something which actually is the goal of all gauriya vaishnavas that is why shri kitani mahaprabhu came he came especially to give the path of rag mark premras niryas korite ashvadan rag mark bhakti lope korite prakshanan parma krishna महाप्रभुम That is why he is called Paramakarun, most merciful. He is the most merciful incarnation, or none different actually from Krishna. Descends once upon, once in the day of Lord Brahma to give that most <coughs> merciful thing, which is the path of Rag Mark Bhakti. Now, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Raghunath Goswami. Shri Sanatan Goswami Dev very nicely presented what is Raghunath Bhakti. Shri Jiva Goswami he expertly compiled, we may say, if Rag Mark or the path of Raghunath Bhakti is like a very strong and beautiful current, like a river, yeah, in order that it wouldn't get 
spoiled anywhere, Sri Diva Goswami protected that river with all his literature, especially with the Sandarbhas. <coughs> Another thing which Nandakisho Prabhu touched briefly is that Sri Narakanda Stakur, Shamananda Prabhu and Srini Vazacharya, they all came to Vrindavan to study under Sri Diva Goswami. They learned everything from Sri Diva Goswami. He was their Shiksha Guru, Bhajan Shiksha Guru, everything he gave them. From this history, this event, we can understand that most important in the disciple and guru relationship is to hear from Gurudev, to hear his instructions, to hear his harikata, and to practice our bhajan under the guidance of our Gurudev. That is the meaning of the relationship between disciple and guru. After they were so qualified, then still they have not taken initiation, formal initiation. Sometimes we think, oh, I should take initiation, then everything will be alright. I will quickly make advancements. Then we take initiation from Gurudev. And after two weeks we think, oh, nothing happened. Maybe I should take a more mantra from Gurudev. Now I will ask him Diksha Mantra or I will ask him Gaur Mantra so that I can advance quickly. <laughs> but understanding what really Diksha is, we have to study the life of our Brihvijacharyas. And in the history, in this example of Srila Jiva Goswami giving all his Shiksha, all his heart to these three wonderful Acharyas in our line, yeah, shows us that this is the real meaning of Diksha. Then he told Jiva Goswami, told his disciple Narottam Dostakur, they wanted to take Diksha, and he said, you go to Lokanath Goswami, and you become his disciple, you take Diksha from him. So this example is a very uh, wonderful proof that what is the real meaning between disciple and Gurudev. Yeah. Although we may have Diksha Guru, so qualified, yeah, but unless we take sincerely all his instructions and we become very eager and inspired to know what is bhajan, how to do bhajan, what is sadhan, yeah. What are the teachings of our Goswamis? Why Sri Jiva Goswami has come? Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Raghunadas Goswami, all our Acharyas, what is so special, what they have brought? And then we see that by hearing these wonderful explanations in the proper way, in the proper association, our faith and our desire to serve Sri Guru and Vaishnavas will increase daily. One check out for the Rupa Sam, people sing. Bindavan Bilasini will speak something. From there you can. Oh, I'm requesting you. Why you are keeping everything in your heart? You should try to present something. There's not so much more that I know about Jiva Goswami, except that um, with his uh, dear disciples of Srinivasacharya, Narutam Dasakur, and Shamananda Prabhu, he inspired them and ordered them to take the Goswami's literatures from Vrindavan and take them and take them uh, to Bengal and to Arusa and to different places. So we actually are very, very grateful to Jiva Goswami for sending out the first Sankirtan party, you might say the first book distribution, so that the whole world eventually would get the writings of the ghost songs. So we're very good. <laughs> cheating. You are cheating us. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Namin Krishna Brahmachari. You should come in. Speak. Oh,
So inference proof is also not valid. So one after another, like Oitijja Praman, which you accept from history, who wrote history at that time, his sense also not perfect. So he bound to wrote, he bound to write something wrong. So it is also valid for spiritual truth. Why Sabda Pramana Mula Pramana? Jibu Sahibar is explaining here that Sabda Pramana means all scriptures like Veda, Simad Bhagavatam, etc. We, it's come from our spiritual hierarchy, that means Guru Parampara. At first, our Adi Guru, that means first Guru Brahma, get all transcendental knowledge from Krishna directly. After that from Brahma, up to date, we are hearing from our Guru Varga, so this, this sound proof, Sabda Praman is valid here. Now, Sri Jibhya Sahipad explained about Praman in his Tattva Sandarva. And Sri Jibhya Sahipad cuts all Mayabad philosophy, monism philosophy. According to Sankaracharya philosophy, Brahma Satta, Jagan Mitha, Jiva Brahmuiva Naparam. Brahma is true and is all is false and there is no difference between soul and super soul. So, Jivasam is asking that Brahma Satta Jagad Mitha. So, Brahma means Bringhati, Bringhati Cha, who is great, so big and who can make another also so great. It's called Brahma. So Brahma is biggest in this universe. No one is equal to Brahma. Because according to scripture we have seen Natasya Karjam Karanancha Vidyate Natat Samasya Vadikasya Drishyate Parasya Sakti Vividhaiva Sriyate Sabhaviki Gyana Valapriyacha No one is equal to him. What to say about more than him? So here Brahma who is greatest, who is biggest. So, Jeeva is asking here that Brahma is in, inside this universe or universe is inside Brahma. Even a monist replied that universe is inside Brahma. Or if they reply that Brahma is, universe, Brahma is inside universe, then, Jeeva, then automatically their logic will be cut it down. How? So if universe is inside Brahma, then Brahma Sattva, which will be inside Brahma, it must be true. Brahma Sattva is Brahma true. If world will be inside Brahma, then it must be true. If you think, if they reply, no, 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 Brahma is inside universe, then they are telling Jagat Mithadini universe is false, then Brahma must be false. Then if they go this side, Yet their false. argument will be false. If they go another side, yet their argument will be false. So Jiva Sahipad cutted their all arguments, all philosophy very easily. Now we are coming is Bhakti Sandarva Vida Tattva. In Bhakti Sandarva, Srila Jiva Sahipad, after discussing so many tattvas, Jiva Sahipad explaining in his Bhakti Sandarva, that if you have no taste for Harikatha, especially you have no taste to hearing a Lila Katha of Krishna, then we have to suffer two ways. Then Jeeva Goswami is putting here about three, four examples. Just like someone is protecting one cow, what is the purpose? He wants to get milk. But if that cow has no calf, what will happen? Then he could not get any milk. So your desire to get milk, the desire will not be fulfilled, so you have to suffer. Another thing, that you have to protect that cow, so you have to suffer in two ways. After that, you will put another example. <coughs> if you have any disobedient son, then you have to suffer two ways. Son means according to Sanskrit, Putra. Putra means, Punnama Naraka Trayate Iya Sa Putra. There are so many types of hell. Hellish planet. So, if father or if parents 
they not do any good act activity they want to go hellis planet if there is sun he make some sadha ceremony and he give some pinda by that they can remove from that hellis planet so putta means punna manava katrayate iya saputra so is this obedient sun so if you notice any disobedient sun you have to suffer two ways because sun must be carry out father's order or mother's order but he disobedient he is not obey he is not care for order of parents so you have so many pain in your heart that my son i am protecting nourishing him but he is not care for me then you are suffering one way another way after your departure that he will give sadha ceremony you will do there is no sadha entity so you have to suffer another way so sir jeev goswami is giving so many example in bhakti sandarbha sir jeev goswami par explain about guru tatva who is guru guru must be realized soul and must be expert in all scriptures any kind of question any kind of doubt of his disciple he can remove immediate so if he is expert in scriptures but he is not realized soul then sri jeev goswami pad is telling jha dhanu viva rakshat that means without cap he protect any cow that he could not get milk similarly even a scholar but he has not realized soul he is not qualified for a guru bona fide guru now jeev goswami pad explaining about konishtha vasna madhyam vasna uttam vasna explain all these things he is telling that उत्तम प्रश्न वर्ष थ्री टाइप्स मूर्छित कसाय निर्धुत कसाय प्राप्त पार्षद भागवत देह जीव सेवा इज गिविंग एग्जाम्पल हियर अबाउट मूर्छित कसाय दैट मीन्स देर इज सम कसाय मीन्स देर इज सम लिटल फॉल्ट बट लैटन पोजिशन वे नारदी टू दर्शन ऑफ भगवान आफ्टर दैट ही वॉन्ट टू be in forest and on to do bhajan being in forest he has some desire to live and stay in forest i shall be in sakti vivas so when we shall advance we have to be surrender ourselves completely which our guru and vishnu or god wants we shall do this but narad rishi here want by himself to live in forest so it is called murchit kasai there is some keen desire nirdhut kasai there is no fall at all like sukhdev gosain path everything was out after that when narad rishi became associate of god then he is wandering any here else any vaikuntha planet in this planet any here he can go so here he can go any here when who we were associate body he can go in here like bhagwan whenever you want he can bhagwan can incarn bhagwan can descend any planet similarly who got associate body he can go in here else any planet whenever he likes so it is called bhagwat person prapta bhagwat person deha now we are coming priti sandarbha in this material world we have so many too much attachment for our body who is related with the body we have so much affection for this so jeev goswami pas is explaining in tatva samkriti sandarbha that bisaye je priti ebe achhay amar sei moto priti ho charane tomar so jeev goswami pas explain one shlok in priti sandarbha bisesho na pai ni ज्या प्रीति अभिव्यक्ति नाम विषय सुन पाएंगी जैसा कि अभिव्यक्ति इग्नोरेंट पर्सन देव सो मच अफेक्शन और अट्रैक्शन फॉर देर बॉडी एंड बॉडी लिमिटेड सो वी हैव टू बी सच काइंड ऑफ अफेक्शन दैट मीन्स वी हैव सो मच अट्रैक्शन फॉर आर दैट थिंग वी हैव टू ट्रांसफर आर अट्रैक्शन फॉर गॉड फॉर भगवान देन भगवान बेस्ट इज मार्स एंड ही कंट्रोल by such kind of devotee so sri jeev goswami pad explain all these things because 
that none can make any calamity, any bad thing in this uh, in this idea of in this concept, question of conception. Just like Vajrayat will give you example, if there is any river, if any bad water comes from other side, then it will be dirty. So like our bhakti dhara, it is like current, it is flowing so strongly. If any other conception come and mix with this current, then this will be amalgamated with bad conception. So Jiva Samipad, concrete is two sides with this such sandarvas that any bad idea, any bad conception must not be amalgamated with this bhakti current. And Jigwa Sarada Kriti is Gopal Champu. If you go through Gopal Champu, sometimes it looks like that Jigwa Sampad is preaching Sakya Bhad. <coughs> so in Bhakti Mahal Thakur is Jaiva Dharma. Vijay Kumar is asking to his Gurudev, Oh Gurudev, why Jigwa Sampad preach every year in his book Sakya Bhad? Then Srila Guru Goswami is replying, No. Jeeva Goswami Pad, his eternal associate of Srila Guru Goswami Pad, he is best preacher of Raganga Pad, Raga Marga. Externally it looks like Sakya Pad. Why so? Then Vijay Kumar is asking, Why so? Jeeva Goswami Pad saw everything in his vision. Then in the future, maybe bad conception come and mix with this. So, he wrote in his Sandarvas, Sitchaya likitam kinchit, kinchit likitam parichaya. Something I am writing by myself, that means Raganuga Marga. And with parichha means I am writing something which is not, un, not qualified for them. Now, Jeeva Goswami is explained like this way. So, Jeeva Goswami is disciple of Rupa Goswami. So he could not preach against Srila Rupa Sahipad. So Rupa Sahipad's idea and Srila Jeeva Sahipad's idea is same. Srila Guru has given so many, so many times an example about Dambandhan Lila. When Nan Jasodama tightened Krishna with grinder mortar, after that Mother Jasoda went away for household work because time everything passed so he she bound to cook she has to chant yogurt again then all boys came Krishna's friend when mother Jasoda went away they are laughing too much oh Kanaya today is very good mother has given you very good lesson every day you still here and there now mother give mother Jasoda has given you a good lesson and Krishna also laughing and all boys are laughing. Krishna is telling, we can, we shall play, we shall go out. When Krishna is pulling the grinder mortar and boys are pushing that mortar. When they came, in the courtyard of Nanda Baba, there is two origin tree. Then Krishna remember one <coughs> thing. What thing? Sattva vidhatum niyabhitta bhasitam. Now, Jamalarjun, they are son of Kuve. Kuve means predominating deity of oil. Their name was Nalkuvar and Manikri. So, some of other Naradrishi cursed them. So, they became tree. Now, Krishna remember, oh, my devotee Naradrishi cursed them and benedict them also. That Krishna will come in Dapar Yuga and he will rescue you. So I have to fulfill my bhakta's desire. So he came. The boys are pulling and his boys are pushing and he's pulling. The, the twin tree was like this way. Their root was in one and their trunk and branches was like this. So when Krishna came through, their garden was stuck on that twin tree and Krishna is pulled so strongly that <coughs> okay. 
कृष्णीज मैं कृष्णीज कृष्ण इज पुलिंग ही वॉज पुलिंग कृष्ण वॉज पुलिंग सो स्ट्रांगली डाउन विद्रिमेंडस साउंड हुआ हयर फ्रॉम हयर साउंड इज कमिंग हियर इज साउंड एवरी वेयर वेन थ्रू दैट साउंड नंद ओवर केम एंड अनटाइट दैट कृष्ण रो एंड आई सिंग हू टाइट यू कृष्ण इज सोविंग यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू से एनीथिंग वे नंद ओवर आस्किंग अगेन एंड अगेन देन ही रिप्लाइड वेरी सफली मादर Nandova ke Nandova giving some laddu. Yet Krishna is sobbing after that. Nandova went to bathing place of Jamuna, and he gave bath to Krishna and he took bath himself and came back with Baladev and Krishna. All mothers of Braj, they are thinking that if Krishna will not come to Jasoda's lap, then Jasoda may die. So, wife of Upananda is Tungi. Is her name was Tungi. He asking, "Will not come? No. To whom will you play? With my father and Dau Bhaiya. I will sleep with my father. Will not go. Mm -hmm. No. Then Rohini mother, mother Rohini is telling, 'If your mother will, that means you die. Then Krishna could not check himself." He spread his arms. Maya, Maya, want to weep. He began to weep bitterly. Then Rohini Devi took Krishna and kept on Mother Jasoda's lap. <coughs> Hearing this, <coughs> Lila from Guru's mouth, our foreign girl, also could not check himself. So Jibra Sahib explained this past times in his Gopal Chanku. And so Jibra Sahib composed one Sanskrit grammar. It is called Hari Nama Mrita Vakaran. As before, Jibu Asami, there are panini, so many grammar books is available, but no one explain according to Jibu Asami part. Jibu Asami part is from all condensed form according to Bhagavat Tattva. Is all condensed form? So Jibu Asami explain himself. Every year is name of Vishnu, Krishna, Madhav, Govinda, like this way. So. Jibo saw the another book also Madhav Mahotsav and so many books are there. He comment so many commentary in Simad Bhagavatam, Bhasma Tosani Tika. So Jib Sahab was a great Bhasma Tosani, his Lok Bhasma Tosani, and Kram Sandar Tika. And he commentary also for Ujjal. He comment also for Jib make one commentary, made one commentary for Ujjal Nimani. लोचन दोचन टीका एंड भक्ति भक्ति सिंधु सो मेनी डीड इन हिज लाइफ सो इफ एनी वन वॉन्ट टू एंटर इन कृष्ण फर्स्ट टाइम दे हेव टू नो एट फर्स्ट अबाउट सिद्धांत भक्ति सिद्धांत ठाकुर प्रभु पाल टोल सिद्धांत बलिया चित्ते ना कर अलस जाते कृष्ण लागे सुखी मानस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फिक्स योर माइंड द लोटस फिट ऑफ कृष्ण देन यू हेव टू नो एट फर्स्ट ऑल सिद्धांत Otherwise, your mind will not be fixed. So, Jibo Sahib Pad in one hand he explained so many Siddhanta, and other hand Krishna was very sweet first time. So, with our own effort we could not enter there. So we pray. Our Vishnu was and Lotus Feet of Guru Pad Padma, and I pray to you all. Please bless to your mercy. Then under the guidance of Guru Pad Padma, I can understand the Jibo Sahib's theory, and I can solve. हरि गुरु बस मीटर नली बंशा कल्पत रूप कृपा सिंधु You should note down all the points and tell me what Navin told. One by one, all points.
In brief. I should repeat what Navin Krishna said. No, no, that's not No, no, yes, sir. Your was for Party, you know. Mukharatirandasya Gyanandana Shilaka Chakshuram Maritandana Chasmai Shri Gulavari Don't do Shila Jiva Goswami Pahar has been uh, glorified by Nana Shastra Vicharana Kanipuno Sadhanama Samstapako Lokanam Hitakai no to the name and Yosham Yakaro Radha Krishna Padara Binda Badanam and Deno Mata Liko Vande Rupa Sanatano Rabido Shi Jiva Gopalako Nana Shastra Vicharana Kanipuno The Goswamis They were so expert in analyzing all of the Vedic scriptures uh, in order to establish the uh, Sanatana Dharma and Bhakti and especially Prema Dharma, the uh, Jaiva Dharma, the religion of the soul to uh, engage in the loving service of Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, he was the son of Anupam. And when Srila Rupa Goswami, he left his home, then at that time he had so much wealth. He was a very wealthy person. So half of that wealth he distributed to Brahmanas, Vaishnav Brahmanas, and who were qualified. And half he kept for an emergency to... Uh, which was used, it was kept with the shopkeeper and it was used to help Sanatana Goswami bribe his jail keeper and escape from jail. And the other quarter of his wealth was given to his family. So why did he give this wealth to his family? Because at that time, Srila Jiva Goswami was a small baby and he gave this uh, money so that Srila Jiva Goswami could get a very good education. So Srila Jiva Goswami received very good education and uh, he became the only uh, initiated disciple of Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami, he gave Diksha to only one personality, that was Srila Jiva Goswami. Yet, very prominent in the line of Srila Jiva Goswami are his three uh, prominent disciples, Shamananda Prabhu, Srinivasacharya and uh, Narottam Das Thakur. These are his very inter intimate disciples, yet he has not given them diksha uh, in, according to the contractual process. The Shamananda Pandit, his diksha guru was uh, Bridai Chaitanya. And Srinivasacharya, his diksha guru was Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And Narayan Das Thakur, his diksha guru was Lokanath Goswami. Yet their primary relationship was with Srila Jiva Goswami because he was their Bhajan Shiksha Guru. So they are considered to be in the Prampara of Srila Jiva Goswami. This is called Bhagavat Prampara. It is based not on uh, the giving of mantra, but rather it is based on proficiency in Bhajan. Srila Jiva Goswami was not only learned in all Siddhant, but he was very Rasik Vaishnava. And uh, we know from our acharyas that he is no ordinary personality but a very dear, intimate maidservant of Srimati Radhika. Um, Sri Vilas Manjari descended into this world and uh, performed pastimes as Srila Jiva Goswami. And therefore, he was able to write such uh, exalted scriptures and descriptions of Krishna Lila, such as we've just heard from Sriman. Uh, Navin Krishna Guru from Sri Gopal Champu. So, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad, from his very young age, he was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I would like to describe something of the, some of the details of the pastime already described by Sri Nanda Kishwa Prabhu. When Valvacharya came to Vrindavan, 
and met with Srila Jiva Goswami. Srila Vallabhacharya was at that time very great, respected and senior to other Vaishnavas. And at that time Srila Rupa Goswami was writing and his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And in this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu he has written a verse, Bhukti Mukti Spriyagavat um, Prisati Ridivartate that the desire for bhukti and the desire for mukti, that means the desire for sense enjoyment and the desire for liberation, are like witches. While those desires are there, then bhakti will never enter the heart. This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Taramadde mukti vancha kaitava pradhan, jana hoite bhakti devi hoi antadhyan. Of all types of cheating, the desire for liberation is a supreme type of cheating. Why? Because it is directly opposed to the eternal intrinsic swarup, the nature of the jiva, which is to jiva swarupai krishna and nityadas. So, if anyone has the desire for liberation, then Bhakti Devi immediately flies from that person and disappears. So, Srila uh, <coughs> Rupa Goswami had written this. When Vallabhacharya approached him, he asked, Oh, what are you writing? Can I see? And upon seeing what Srila Rupa Goswami had written, he didn't say anything, but he just said, Oh, can you give this to me for proofreading? I will. He offered to proofread it. And Rupa Goswami, he was so uh, happy, Yes, you, you, you can proofread it. Then Sri Vallabhacharya, he went to the Yamuna to take bath. Upon seeing this, Srila Jiva Goswami could understand the heart of Vallabhacharya, that he had seen something which he thought was uh, inc- incongruous with the Siddhant. So, on some pretext, Srila Jiva Goswami took permission from Rupa Goswami and went to the Jamuna. So, Srila Jiva Goswami then questioned uh, Sri Vallabhacharya, it, you have said that you want to proofread the writings of Srila Rupa Goswami, he is perfect personality, all of his words are perfect. This is the speciality of the writing of Rupa Goswami. The writings of Rupa Goswami are not any theory, but he has first realized everything and practiced everything himself, and then he has written. So, knowing this, Srila Jiva Goswami said, have you seen that there was any fault there? Sri Vallabhacharya said, you should know that um, yogis and also many great personalities they perform austerities for thousands of years to get the mercy of Mukti Devi, the goddess of liberation. Therefore, to call Mukti Devi a witch, this is quite inappropriate. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, he, de- he described that, um, My dear sir, my Gurudev has not written that Mukti Devi is a witch, but Bhukti Mukti Spriha, the desire for Mukti is like a witch, which haunts the heart. Hmm? Upon him, Upon hearing this, then Sri Vallabhacharya was speechless. And he, when he returned to the company of Srila Rupa Goswami, then he commented that, Oh, you have such a learned and qualified and brilliant young disciple. Even he was not disturbed. He is, very, he is a pure devotee. He was not disturbed. And genuinely, he glorified Srila Jiva Goswami uh, uh, in the presence of Srila Rupa Goswami. But Srila Rupa, Rupa Goswami could understand that Srila Jiva Goswami had shown his erudition and his uh, uh, skill and um, qual- his quality, his vast, the quality of his vast learning in the presence of a superior. So, in spiritual life, to make a show of one's learning in the presence of one's superiors is very, very uh, uh, bad. This is quite offensive. So, Srila Rupa Goswami, later meeting with Srila Jiva Goswami, he told him that you are not qualified to stay in Vrindavan. Anyone who takes pleasure in humiliating others or takes pleasure in asserting their own self-worth is not fit to reside in Vrindavan, therefore you should leave. So Srila Jiva Goswami, the words of his guru struck him like a thunderbolt. 
Yet he could not disobey them. So he went to the outskirts of Vrindavan and there he lay down in a cave. Uh, and day and night he was crying, crying, Ha Rupa, Ha Rupa, Ha Gurudev, of my Prabhu. And crying without giving up eating, giving up sleeping. Mm. So here we find the <coughs> epitome of the bona fide disciple. Shri Guru Charani Rati, Aise Uttamagati. Mm. The highest goal is to have the, the sublime, incessant Rati, deep attachment for the lotus feet of Sri Guru. Mm. When at the time of the mm. Ras Lila, then we see, uh, sorry, when Uddhav came to Vrindavan, then he had a conversation with the gopis. And in this conversation, the gopis described what is the meaning of uh, Hetu Prem and Ahetu Prem. Love which has cause and love which is without a cause. Mm -hmm. So there are many examples of the Hetu Prem, love which has a cause. Mm -hmm. For example, the bird will live in a tree, or the deer will live in the forest, or the bumblebee has a relationship with the flower, or a, a prostitute has a relationship with her client, or a student has a relationship with the teacher. But these relationships, they're all hatred. They all have a cause. And because there's a cause for this relationship, therefore, when that cause disappears, then the relationship also disappears. Mm -hmm. The love which has a cause, uh, is what at some point in time will be broken. So when the bee has drunk the honey from the flower, and there's no more honey in the flower, then he will leave the flower. The bird will be attracted and have a relationship with the tree. But if the tree catches fire, then the bird will leave. Hmm? The deer has a relationship with the forest. But if the forest is destroyed and becomes black and dry by a forest fire, then the deer will have no relationship with the forest fire. The prostitute will have an affection for her client, but when his money runs out, she will kick him. And the student will have a relationship with the teacher. But when his education is complete, then he will give up the teacher. So that love which has any cause will one day be broken. But that love which is causeless, which has no cause, will never be broken. Mm -hmm. So, in the same way, the love of the Sat Shisha for the Sat Guru, it has no cause. It is pure and unconditional love, so it can never be broken. So even though Srila Rupa Goswami, he spoke very, very uh, harsh words to Jiva Goswami, and even though Jiva Goswami was right, he was correct to maintain the prestige of his spiritual master in the face of one who had found some fault in his writings. So Jiva Goswami was not at fault. So even though he wasn't at fault, and he was sent away by Rupa Goswami, still, his love for his Gurudev was not diminished, but rather it increased more and more. And he was lying in the cave crying, Ha Gurudev, Ha Gurudev, over and over again, giving up all eating and sleeping, and he was prepared to die and give up his life. <laughs> when Srila Sanatan Goswami came to hear that Jiva Goswami was living like this in a cave, then he went to Srila Rupa Goswami, and he said, Oh Rupa, it appears that you have forgotten the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So Sri Rupa Goswami said, how is that? So then he said, he told him, you should remember the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then Sri Rupa Goswami, he began to remember the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one by one. And when he came to the teaching, uh, Jiva Doya, one should be merciful to the Jivas, one should show mercy on the living souls. Then he realized, Jiva Doya, I am... <laughs> I should show my mercy, not on the Jiva, but on Jiva Goswami, like this. And then his heart melted, and he sent for Jiva Goswami, and Srila Jiva Goswami, and his beloved Gurudev, they were uh, very ecstatically reunited. Mm -hmm. So from this we can see, what is the quality, what is the heart, what is the deep attachment within the heart of the Sad Shisha for his Gurudev. <coughs> and therefore, he was completely empowered by Srila Rupa Goswami, to compile such wonderful shastras, such as the Sandarbhas, in which he has defined, uh, given so many definitions, in such a way that no one can ever find any loop or hole in the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. In his uh, Tattva Sandarbha, he, as Shriman uh, Naveen Krishnamu has already described, he has spoken about Praman Tattva. Mm -hmm. If we want to get knowledge of the truth, then from where will we attain this knowledge? 
what is actually reliable. And then having established that the really reliable authority is Shabda Praman. Uh, in other words, the transcendental sound which is embodied in the Shastra coming in Parampara, then he goes on to establish something more, a further teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What teaching is that? Sri Mad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamalam Prema Kumato Mahan. That the topmost Praman, the highest evidence, is the evidence of Srimad Bhagavatam. He has described that Shabda Praman is the best. But there are so many types of Shabda Praman. All Veda, Upanishad, Puranas, Vedanta, and so many things have been given by Srila Vyasadeva. But if we examine all of them, then we will see that in the Vedas there is the Karmakanda and Jnanakanda, and in the Puranas there are Puranas which are Sattvic, uh, for those in Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagun. So it is not that in every Shastra the ultimate conclusion has been given. But having compiled all the Vedic literatures, then Swami Bhagavan himself appeared uh, in this world as uh, Krishna Dvaipayan Vyas. And in his uh, maturity, when he was uh, under the guidance of his Gurudev, Nad Muni, he has compiled the ultimate Praman, and that is Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Jiva Goswami has established very methodically and systematically uh, and irrefutably the conclusion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the supreme evidence and supreme <coughs> scriptural authority. Yeah. Srila Jiva Goswami in his uh, Bhakti Sandarbha he has described very important things for the Sadhak. What is that? In, sadhana, in Bhakti then the first thing is Sri Guru Pada Shraya. One must take shelter of a bona fide Guru. So Srila Jiva Goswami has explained what is bona fide Guru. In Srimad Bhagavatam is written Tasmat Gurun Kapadyeta Jigyashu Sain Uttamam Shabde Parita Nishnatam Brahmanu Pashamasrayam. That who is bona fide Guru? The bona fide Guru, he has the. If one wants to know what is the absolute truth, if one is interested in the ultimate benefit of his life, then he must surrender at the lotus feet of a bona fide Guru. But who is a bona fide Guru? The, the sad Guru, he has three qualities. Shabde, Parit, and Nishnatam, Brahmanu, Parasham, Asrayam. Of these three qualities, two of the qualities are the uh, Swarup Lakshana, the inherent characteristic of the Guru. And the, uh, another quality is the Tatasta Lakshana, the external characteristic of the Guru. That is, that uh, Brahmanu, Parasham, Asrayam, he is completely detached from uh, the material sense gratification. But there are other personalities practicing yoga and gyan. They also manifest some detachment. So what is actually the symptom of the bona fide guru? Shabda Parecha Nishna Atam. So in his country, Srila Jiva Goswami, he wrote, Shabde Brahmani Veda Tat Parayena Vicharena Nishna Tam. That, what is the meaning of the word Shabde? That he, is, he knows all of the conclusions and can establish all of the conclusions of the Veda by deliberation. And he has the power to convince others of those conclusions. And then, Shabde Pare Tanishnatam. What is Pare? Srila Jiva Goswami wrote, Pare Brahmani Bhagavat Rupa Avibar Vestu Aparokshanu Bhavena. That the Sadguru, he has realization of Bhagavan. He is Tatvadarshi. He is the seer of the truth. He has had the darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Sad Guru. Mm -hmm. So this verse was written in Srimad Bhagavatam thousands of years before by Srila Vyasadeva. And Srila Jiva Goswami has commented on this, explaining the true meaning of this verse. Mm -hmm. But in the, now, in, since the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the qualification of the Sad Guru is even higher than this. Uh, what is that? Nikunji, you know, radically siddhya, yaya liberi uptira pekshaniya, tatta reduction, atibala bhasya, vande guru sri charanaravinda. The Sadguru is very, very dear to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna because he's so expert in assisting them in making tasteful arrangements for the loving affairs of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna within the kunjas of Vrindavan. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, in his Bhakti Sandarbha, he has also explained uh, what is. Uh, Diksha. 
Because in this world we see many types of diksha, such as the um, the up, uh, upanayam ceremony given to boys when they come of the uh, some slight maturity, then they will accept some diksha from their kula guru. Mm-hmm. This type of initiation, this is not the uh, uh, daksha janma, birth by Vaishnav initiation. The birth by Vaishnava initiation has been described by Srila Jiva Goswami in his Bhakti Sandarbha. Dibyam jnanam ito dadya kuriya papasa sangsayam tasmatik seti saprakta deshikais tatvako viday. That diksha is a process. It is a, the process whereby divyam jnanam ito dadya. The divya jnan, transcendental knowledge, is imparted to the disciple and Kuryat Papa Sasanshayan. That all the pap, all the sinful reactions, and the cause of sinful actions, which is avidya, ignorance of one's identity, this is all taken away. So, furthermore, Sri Jiva Goswami, he has explained what is Divyam Gyanam. Because many people, especially today, will see what is the meaning of transcendental knowledge. They will tell you the meaning of transcendental knowledge, Divya Gyan. The Guru, he gives you Divya Gyan. What is that? He tells you, you are not the body. If you are in the cycle of birth and death, you will have to undergo reincarnation in this world. There are three modes of material nature, and Krishna is above these, and you are his servant. Like this, that this is the Divya Gyan. But what does Srila Jiva Goswami say? He gives a definition. Devyam Gyanam Gyatramanta Shimati Bhagavat Srup Gyanatena Bhagavat Sambandha Vishesh Gyanam Cha. That the Guru gives Divyagyan, transcendental knowledge. What is, what is that transcendental knowledge? It is the knowledge of the Swarup, of Bhagavan, given in form of the mantra. Hmm? And along with that, uh, Bhagavat Srup Gyan Tena, Bhagavat Sambana Vishesh Gyanam Cha. And by Diksha, the Guru, he gives one the transcendental knowledge of one's own specific, eternal relationship with the Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. This is Divya Gyan. So this is Vishesh, a problem. What is the meaning of Vishesh? Bhagavat Sambandha Vishesh Gyanam Cha. Bhagavat Sambandha means the relationship with Bhagavan. And Vishesh means particular. The one's special particular relationship uh, with the Supreme Personality of God. What is that? What is that particular yes. relation? <laughs> so, in the, general, in the general sense, every uh, jiva is related to Krishna. How? Jivaera Swarupai, Krishnaera Nitya Das. We're all the eternal servants of Krishna. Yet, uh, this is the general information. But the specific information is what, what is my uh, eternal uh, service, the mood of my service, and all of the uh, um, transcendental qualities which are there in the latent position within the swarup of the jiva. So the jiva, the there, general sadhak, there must be in all jivas. They have a special kind of relation with Krishna. Some they are related to friendship. Some they have a relation like Krishna is my son, that is Vasalya mood. And some are related with Krishna, like Krishna is my beloved. So all the jivas have their own swarup. By constitution, it is covered. Guru knows this relation. What is the relation between Krishna and Jeev, the special Jeev? And then he, by mantra, he gives this uh, special relation to that. So this is Vishesh Sambandha. So, in this way, Srila Jiva Goswami has given such essential knowledge uh, for the benefit of everyone in this world. Now it is eight. Hmm. Very good. One chuck of two is not good.
what jiv goswami was right hmm? that he cut at the argument of balavacha no and he defended his guru dev but what about rup goswami he was right or wrong right he was right why If J. Goswami was right, then he must be wrong. Eh? How he was right? Because he is guru, he has the um, adhika that he can give the. Oh, this is not argument. And this is not yukti. Rupa Goswami is guru. He is like Trinada Pishuni Chena Tarara Pishuni Sunna Omani Na Mano Dena. He want to respect everyone, but the Jibus, the Jibus, Jibus side part, he could not tolerate. This is not also logic. This came up through him. This is not also logic. He wanted to increase the love of Shri Jiva Goswami by uh, putting him in separation. No. <laughs> Rupu Swami can respect Balabaja. and he wanted to respect him so in front of him he disciple his disciple jiv goswami is disrespecting him or oh, this is wrong hmm? mm-hmm. that balabachar may think that oh rup goswami is not disres- disrespecting me Oh, actually, uh, Rup Goswami is this through him. So it comes on Rup Goswami. So Rup Goswami was giving respect to Balabhachar. Uh, by giving punishment to Jiv Goswami, he is right to this point. but jiv goswami is right that any disciple should not bear anything against his guru dev so jiv goswami was also right and also rup goswami was right <coughs> he wanted to respect balabhachar no <coughs> so he by doing so so both were right where this when where ji goshami went after rup goshami told that you should go from here where bhai jao bhai jao nand ghat nand ghat yeah. uh, actually ji goshami is like a brilliant a star or intellectual in, giant in our disciple mind he is the greatest teacher in our brahma madhva gauriya vaishnava sampradaya he designation is not that he is son of anupam but he is disciple of rupa goswami don't tell this if you are explaining so much then you can tell but we can tell that oh ji goswami is disciple of <coughs> रूप गोस्वामी दिस इज हिज ग्लोरी ग्लोरिफिकेशन अदरवाइज नॉट श्रील प्रभुपाद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी ठाकुर इज सन ऑफ भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर दिस इज नॉट ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ श्रील प्रभुपाद हे डिसाइपल ऑफ गोरकिशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज एंड ऑल्सो भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर Really, he is the disciple of 
Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But in line we tell like this that he is disciple of Bhakti Vinod Thakur was his Bhagavat Parampara Guru, Bhagavat Guru, Shaman Guru, Bhajan Guru, everything. And Gokrishok Das Bhagavad was Mantra Guru, like Diksha Guru. So sometimes Bhagavat Parampara Guru, Bhajan Guru is more superior. And if Diksha Guru is also Bhajan Guru, then he is so much higher. So Jiva Goswami is a very brilliant and very scholar, Acharya in Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. He was a baby child when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to go in Vrindavan. And Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami met in Kanai Nath Sala in the way of Vrindavan. At that time Jiva Goswami was a baby and Rupa Sanatan brought that baby and gave it to the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He touched like a very little baby. But Jiva Goswami never re- reminded this that so vividly. He has a very vague idea that he has touched the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He told that how Rupa Goswami managed his uh, study. He gave so much money to the house that they should help Jiva Goswami study. So in boyhood he became very big scholar in Sanskrit and Bengali, also in Urdu and Arbi Farsi. He was unparalleled learned person in Sanskrit, especially in grammar. When he became about 12 or 16 is as it. Then he left his home and came to Navadvi. At that time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left this world. Sachi Maya was there and Vishnu Priya was there. Nityananda Prabhu was there. But all weeping for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jiva Goswami came there and Sri Nityananda Prabhu kept his feet on the head of Jiva Goswami and he spurred everything in the heart of Jiva Goswami. All tattva, everything. Then he began to cry for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jiva Goswami told, Come with me and I will take you to uh, Parikrama of 16 crosses of Naudip Mandal. And he took him with him and he took him in nine islands of Naudip. Antardeep, Shimandeep, Godram Deep, Madhva Deep, Kol Deep, Riti Deep, Janu Deep, Madram Deep and Arutra He especially showed him Mayapur, Jogpeet and then <coughs> he told that I want to be here in your lotus feet. But Nityananda Prabhu told that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had told that I am giving you all Rupa Shami and all your family to Vrindavan. So you should go to Vrindavan. 
to Rupa and Siddha Sanatan Goswami. And he told that in the way you will go to Varanasi. And there you shall learn so many things. Vedanta Darshan and all the, the, uh, the explanations of Shankar, Madhva, Vishnu Swami, Nimbadik, Sri Ramanuya Acharya. And then you should go to Vrindavan. So he went to Kashi and there was a disciple of Sarbham Bhattacharya. His name was Madhusudan Vidya Vachaspati. He had learnt everything and he studied all Vedan from Sarbham Bhattacharya. What Sarbham Bhattacharya had? Received from Sai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, that's Masudan Bhat, Vidya Vachaspati taught him everything. And when he was the expert in all these things, who went to Vrindavan, to Rup and Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. And he took shelter in the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami told that you should initiate. <coughs> so Rupa Goswami initiated this boy Ji Goswami. And he taught him what he has written. What he has written? Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu Ujjwal Hinmani and all his books like Vidagd Madhav, Lalit Madhav and so many books. That is a Rasa Shastra. So he met so much a scholar in a Rasa Shastra also. And then he was fully master of all these things. Rupa Goswami told him that you should check grammatical mistakes if there are in my books. You should compile and you should read proof, proofread. <coughs> and he used to do. And at that time, one day, Balabhacharya came. That they have told the story. <coughs> really, uh, Rupa Goswami was so much acquainted with Srila Balavachari because he has met once in his, his own native place, Adai Gram, near Prayat. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there with a roop and Anupam. And there very good discourses took place. Hmm? So he knew, he used to know. So he told that, are you writing some any book? Oh, he told, yes, I am writing. What book you are writing? Then he told, at Bhakti Rasamishan, oh, very good. May I see? Then he told, you can see. Then he, he took the book and he was seeing, seeing and he saw that as slow, bhakti mukti is priya. And that he explained. Really mukti is not which. Which. But the spriha. Desire. The desire to have. This is like which. Balabhachat could have not understood this thing. <coughs> But Ji Goswami, being a little boy of sixteen years, and he what, taught Balavachar, and then Balavachar was so much impressed, impressed. impressed. impressed by him. Impressed. 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 
And then he went to Srila Rupa Goswami and told, Oh, your disciple is so learned. But he thought that he has defended him. He told that, You should be tolerant. Why? He is a Brahmin, learned, and he is also Vaishnava. And he is with me. And you cannot tolerate, you know, that he is telling that I will correct. So for the Rupa Goswami it is correct. But for Jiva Goswami it was not correct. Because anyone was defending his, um, was correcting, correcting his Guru there. But Rupa Goswami was not a Vaishnava like this. He was the associate of Radha and Krishna, you know, of Vrindavan. He cannot do any mistake. So he <coughs> argued some points and he defeated Vallabhacharya. It was right. If anyone is cutting or Gurudev any writing, any teaching, then we must do like this. But when we are in the position of Prabhu Goswami, then we should honor. That you can correct no harm. For Vaishnava. So, Rupa Goswami, he was not angry from heart, but he showed some anger like this. And he told that to you. Then when Sanatana Goswami heard this, he became so worried. And he went to that place. All the villagers came to Sanatana Goswami and told, Oh, a new Baba has come here. Though the age is so young, young. young but always weeping, crying in the love of Krishna. Oh Krishna, oh Radhe, Radhe, doing and weeping day and night. He is more uh, qualified. qualified than you also. The villagers began to talk. Then he thought that, oh, it, he must be Jiva Goswami. So he came to Jiva Goswami and he saw that he was about to die. He gave up, he had gave up taking anything. No bath, nothing. Always weeping, weeping, weeping for whom they... So, Sanatana Goswami took him with him and he kept anywhere hidden in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan. And he came to Silaru. Oh. What is our duty to all jivas? Souls. Soul means jiv. Then he told that jiva daya. We should be very Kind to, jiva. kind to jivas, all jivas. Then this jiva is not jivas, jiva. Hmm? Why you are so much unkind to this jiva? Hmm? Then he began to weep for jivas. Then he called jiva and he gave jiva in the lap of Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami Singh jiva that he was about to die. So many diseases were Skin there. Disease. Hmm? And he was to die. Then Rupa Goswami embraced him. And he Nourishing. nourished him. He <coughs> took medicine and he gave medicine. And again he was nourishing him. After some time. He became healed, cured. And then Jiva Goswami always <coughs> serving <coughs> Rupa Goswami. When Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami left this world, 
he was the prominent acharya of Vishwa Vaishnava Raj Sabha. This is really Krishna consciousness, which was established by Brahma himself. So, Narad, Vyas, Sukhude Goswami, all they are acharya of Krishna consciousness, real force Krishna consciousness there. And after that, Jiva Goswami was the prominent acharya of Krishna consciousness. I saw a book uh, today here. Yeah. Oh, Shila Gaur Gobind Maharaj has written this book. I think that no one of his own has written this, but he has written very clearly that Swamiji has not established Krishna consciousness, but actually who is the establisher? Brahma. I think that he is also disciple. So Krishna is root of all Guru Jagat Guru. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. So it is coming from Krishna. So Krishna comes Sashnas. So Swamiji is not an establisher of this, but he is one of the prominent acharya in this line. So we should realize all these things. So Ji Goswami, after Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, he spread our whole world the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he made so many books so that there should be no contamination, anything in or amalgamate. There should not come any kushiddhant in this. That conception. So he has written these six sandarbhs. And also Sarva Sambhadini. And they have told something about this. Today is about eight. So we can say something tomorrow in morning or evening. If I am telling so much then it will be some problem for me. So you should try to know all these things and to follow Jiva Goswami philosophy. He is not different from Rupa Goswami and Rabhunath Das Goswami. He is in the line. He has done some Swakiya Bhav explanation for the benefit of his unqualified disciples or followers of those who are not qualified for ra, ra, rupa anuga, raga anuga. That is very good. So we will see. We will explain it more tomorrow. Go to <laughs>
there's a journalist coming um, to... In the morning, you should do arti. Okay. At about five or five hours. Yes. <coughs> and after that, you should do kirtan. Right. And then, um, some yeah. harikatha. Yes. And then, ten? Uh, at 10.30, there will be a journalist coming uh, to interview Gurudev. And um, if it's okay with you, the journalist is quite happy for the devotees to sit and listen to the, to the interview. That's at 10.30 a.m. Uh, you will question Prashadam. Yes. And then Prashadam. In uh, evening? In the, in the, in the there will be breakfast after uh, Hari Katar in the morning and then uh, there will be midday ati. There will be some light Prashad around that time provided. The main Prashad will be at 4 in the afternoon. Um, and then, of course, after Gurudev speaks, then there's seven o'clock arti, and there'll be prashad, some light prashad for the in guests. Evening, no class. Uh, excuse me. At six, at six, Shri Gurudev will speak every. I evening. think that you should be beginning from five. Right. Five to six. Kirtan. Yes. And from six to seven. Some class. Okay. So from five till six there'll be Bajan's Kirtan and six till seven there'll be nuclear nuclear distance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every day? Yes. From five to seven right. class. Yes. All can come. Okay. You can invite all others. Yes. Sisirad <laughs> 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 <laughs>